It is my great pleasure to have with us today Michelle Wu, who is an alumni of the Kelly School. She is a member of Kelly's Global Dean's Advisory Council and an honoree in Kelly's Academy of Alumni Fellows. I had the good fortune to be with Michelle in Singapore earlier in 2024, and she agreed to come and talk with our class. Michelle, welcome. Thanks for having me, Brett. I'm glad to be here. Michelle currently serves as the Chief Digital Data and Technology Officer for Rentog, and my German may be rusty, you may have to correct me on that, and previously had been Senior Vice President of IT Core. So Michelle, what are you doing these days? Tell our students about it. Great. So maybe I'll start with that Brentag is a company. Brentag is one of the world's largest uh, chemical and ingredient distribution company uh, headquartered in Essen, Germany. Uh, we spread around 78 different countries, uh, over 13,000 employees. Um, we are currently in our second strategy called Horizon 2 uh, for Brentag to position ourselves as a technology and data-driven company. So my role specifically is to help the company to positions uh, in many different ways. We call it digital data and excellence to drive our uh, initiatives, not only driving the top line, but also also the bottom lines. But at the end of it, we put everything for our customer and supplier partners in everything we do. So our experiences and the journeys that we produce for our customers, for our suppliers, for our supply chain partners, as well as our employees. And that's everything we deliver through our departments in digital data and technology. So one of the things that's a challenge around the initiative, like you've described, and I, the company has grown over time. There's been M&A over time. So I can imagine there's a lot of just data work to even get the data out of wherever it lives into the places to do the things to really drive excellence. Can you talk about your journey in trying to lead those kinds of initiatives? Because that's hard work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so maybe I'll provide a little bit of context before we can even talk about how we prepare the data or how we think about data, or how we think about AI in general. Uh, Brent High Context is we grew through numerous of eminent acquisitions as you described before. Um, and many of them are actually small to medium size. Um, everything of that, when we, and our operating model, I would say in Horizon 1, which is the, the year of a 2020, uh, 2021 until 2023, we were still very decentralized model uh, in many different ways, including our IT and data infrastructures. We didn't really have that much of a data infrastructure back then. So to prepare everything to, to become uh, where we need to head to with, with everything, the first thing you need to really describe is what is a global structure that we need to operate from infrastructure, from workplace, to get the data out of all the decentralized, we have a double digits of ERPs, as well as many different ways that we look at data. Um, what we have done uh, since we started a journey in 2022, we have to determine our enterprise architecture tech stack. That's the first step you have to do. So um, in many different ways, we call it the digital business architectures, which would declare one of the, our uh, fundamental, I would say foundations to connect all the data. Then you have to define what are the data you want to connect, otherwise you generate so much waste in our systems. So we actually determine the principles that if the data go into serving our customer and suppliers, those will be the first data we will come into it and then linked all the definitions that we need to do. Um, are we there yet? Yeah. Forgive me if I can interrupt because you've said something sure. so important. Like you're looking at this entire kingdom of mm -hmm. a couple of things, all this M&A over time, kind of undigested M&A, mm -hmm. I would assume yeah. from uh, a tech perspective, lots of data. Some of it's financial, some of it's customer, some of it's, you know, the supply chain planning and all. And you set out some principles of saying, okay, mm -hmm. we're going to focus first on the data that matters the most to serving our customers. Correct. And you said, we are going to establish an IT data architecture that mm -hmm. we know what we're aiming towards. And so you just can't do the things you're trying to do, like reach for level five maturity when you're, you really haven't got level two you know, in place. So I just want to call that out for our students. Please keep yeah. going. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, good, that's a good call because a lot of the time people spend so much time 
fitting the data into somewhere. Uh, it could be a black hole, it could be a black box, but you don't generate any benefits and ROI out of it. So we made a decision in principle, we're going to generate those first. Of course, the second thing that because of the customer supplies first, those are actually driven to financial data. So, and that's really the second thing coming along with it in order to determine how we're serving our customer and suppliers, the financial data cannot be forsaken. So that's one of the things is the guiding principles that we have as well. What's the second thing when we move on to, which I actually feel uh, right now we're still in the, uh, I would say, refining stage is we have not yet um, able to do reusable data products yet. So data architecture is one of the things we pay a lot of attention to. And we're very glad that uh, we have we have an incredible um, uh, data leaders uh, as well as data engineering leaders uh, who, who will actually complete the roadmap by next uh, quarter, uh, next year, uh, third quarter next year, which will generate reusable data products that will actually not only serving one vertical, but multiple verticals within the companies. So think about the foundation of building the data uh, into where we are today is, is you have to have a guiding principle. Otherwise, otherwise you get lost in everything. The second thing is how do then you help your business to operate day to day with the data you need to serve your customer better. And the third thing you do is make sure the data you generate can be usable for business purposes and for many different experiences purposes. Yeah, that's so fantastic because it would be so easy to fall for kind of the siren call of the loudest VP yelling, needing this or that or something. And you end up with a bunch of brittle bespoke yeah. data solutions that as far as ROI, they, they become unsustainable. You get in data conflicts when people are trying to interpret what information is. So it sounds like your executive team has really taken the decision. They're going to build this with intentionality from the mm -hmm. ground up. Thank <laughs> you.